I think we are live. Welcome, What's everyone. What's going on, everybody? Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. We got Josh Dyer in the house. What's going Thank on? Thank you very much, Josh, for joining in today, man. We appreciate you here. My pleasure. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Happy to support you guys. Happy to support the community. My pleasure. Thank All right. You. Well, Thank you. you know, this was coming. Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> All right. About myself. So, um, I am the design engineer for Vortex Racing out here in Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, as you can tell by the banner behind me. Um, EK is our chain line, so we actually um, sell and support EK chains. Um, so you can call us for sprockets, chains. You can call us for SBS brakes. You can call us for rear sets, uh, clip-ons, you name it. If it bolts to the bike, pretty sure we're, we're going to have parts for you. So I'm the guy behind developing all of that stuff for Vortex. Um, and then I've been in, been on motorcycles pretty much my whole life. Uh, I started racing competitively four years ago. Uh, I was doing a ton of track days before that. Got off the track of my first track day and I said, I need more. I need to do this as much as I can. So um, the guy, pitted next to me was like hey man i race up in new hampshire why don't you why don't you come get your race license and and see what you can do and i never looked back i've been i've been racing ever since i don't even ride on the street anymore i know that sounds really terrible but too many close calls for me out on the street and and i'll tell you i'd rather be out on the track racing with the guy i know going into a corner side by side i know exactly what he's thinking he knows what i'm thinking and we're both mm -hmm. gonna make it out of there safe you know what i mean so Less uh, risk about him checking his Instagram while he's going into it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, I just I love the community. I love racing. I love motorcycles in general. So yeah, excited to be here, man. Okay. Um, so the chat hasn't lit up as of yet, but as you know, I have several questions. But uh, we can get into the manufacturing and production of parts. So, uh, what's the typical process in creating sprockets? Strong sprockets. So you know, sprockets, yeah. I mean, sprockets are, you know, fairly, fairly simple. I mean, there is a lot of, there is a lot of R and D that goes into sprockets. So, I mean, there's chain pitch, you know, there's, there's different size, different tooth count. There's all, there's all that that goes into it. But what, what Vortex focuses on is trying to keep the sprockets lightweight. I mean, we offer a steel sprocket. We also offer aluminum sprockets. It, it, it all depends on what you're looking for. You know, you'll put a steel on a street bike if you're just, you know, commuting back and forth to work. You need something that's going to that's gonna last you. You don't have to worry about changing it out after a race, you know. Um, but then we also have our, like, Cat 5 line um, of aluminum sprockets where it's lightweight. It's more built for racing, um, you know, and kind of, like, to talk about what goes into that. So, you know, we'll... We'll put a sprocket into SolidWorks and, and design it, and we'll start putting designs in it, and then we'll start doing like stress analysis and like testing the sprocket to see how it's going to react under different stresses and different situations. And then we'll take that data and we'll say, yeah, this is a great sprocket. It weighs, you know, a couple of ounces less than our our last one. Let's do this, or we'll test it and be like. Oof, that <laughs> that's not gonna work. So right. you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of communication, not not just with like uh, myself and the um, the owner of, of Vortex, but also like the guys out in the shop, the guys up up front. You know, com our, our customer service. We'll talk about all these things. They'll be like, "Hey, I got this great idea," and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, we tried that five years ago and it failed miserably. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't do that." Or they'll be like, "Wow, we never thought of that. Let's test it." And so. It's, it's really just a lot of communication, you know, and it's and it's a great industry because we do have competition, but we're all friends at, at the end of it. You know, so somebody will call and say, hey, man, I'm having a problem trying to figure this out. And, you know, we're all we're all tr have the same goal. We're all just trying to get people on motorcycles, get them parts, you know, so there's it's it's communication really is what it comes down to. And. You know, the, the technology that we use at, at Vortex, um, you know, a lot of that goes into to designing and developing all of our components. I have a, I have a question, too, that uh, a couple of people asked me um, about is uh, 
the R and D that goes behind that, right? And like mm -hmm. you, Vortex is a very big name, and you guys are at the very you you guys compete in a very high level. Mm -hmm. How much of that do you do you feel is a team effort and a passion for what you guys actually do? It, that's it's a hundred percent behind what we do. I mean, when I say team effort, I mean like I'm I'm talking to guys out under the shop that are cutting the sprockets, that are standing by the machines and, and standing there, and I'm going over to them and asking them questions. And you know, they're like, "Oh, this is how we chamfer this." And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, "Wow, I." I can I can use that idea to to help develop something else or I'm thinking in my head how can I make that easier for you to accomplish you know like maybe I don't put in such a, a crazy design it looks cool but eh, man it sucks to manufacture you know so the team effort is really not just not just the guys at Vortex but like when I go to <laughs> ever since I started working at Vortex I go to the racetrack and it's like Hey Josh, I got an idea. I got an idea. I got an idea. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, what, what, what do you, what do you, what do you got? And and like, I'll hear ideas and I'm like, oh shit, I never thought of that. You know. So, the race community, all the guys that I race with, my friends, like people will will come to me and and, and bring ideas to the table. So it really is like a team effort, not just in vortex, but just in general. Yeah, definitely. So even if you guys were like. Hey man, I got this cool idea I've been kicking around. We'll figure it out. We'll, you know, That's awesome, man. we'll talk. <laughs> I don't. I don't really know. Like, who's your your largest competitor? What JT Sprockers or somebody? Like, who would that be? PBI. So, I mean, we're all. I, I hate to say the word competitor, you know, because okay. you know we were just down at an event in in Las Vegas, the AIM convention, um, back in February, mm -hmm. and. Pro Taper, who sells sprockets, they, they do a lot in MX and dirt. Um, we went over to his booth and he's like, hey guys, great to see you, shook our hands and was, and it's like, and then afterwards we were like talking ideas with one another. So it's not really like, I wouldn't say competitor, it's just like, an, it's another friend in the marketplace. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's weird with the the, kind of the world we live in like yeah you can go buy a vortex sprocket you can you can go buy another another name brand sprocket but it's it, it's it's really a family it really is and I, and I, it was weird when i came into the industry uh and started learning that and it was like wait we're supposed to hate that guy no no he's yeah, cool he calls us all the time for stuff <laughs> like it's so yeah cool. i'm actually very surprised to hear that man yeah, because, right, right, right. i feel like it's very yeah. cutthroat in some of the industries yeah. that we talk yeah. about behind the scenes yeah no you know we're, I mean? we're a family so, we're really a family yeah. I, I think that's yeah you you're really surprising me there yeah. because i wasn't expecting that answer by yeah. any means yeah, I, I was surprised to see that too and, and especially like when we went to that convention down in vegas and like people coming up to us wearing our competitors shirts and they're like, Hey man, Hey, I, great idea with this. Or like, what do you guys think about this? And I'm like, I'm, I'm supposed to fight you right now. I'm like, what are we, <laughs> what? no, it was great. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, um, I think for me, cartel is, uh, I was thinking about chains the other day. Right. Cause remember we had that conversation about five twenties mm -hmm. on yeah. boosts. Yeah, I know technology says that the tensile strength of chains has increased exponentially, but mm -hmm. would you trust a, even though people do it, mm -hmm. a 520 chain on a Busa? Because I'm I'm entertaining the thought. So I want to. Right there. Yes. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I don't know, like, <clears throat> I've been going back and forth and back and forth with it. I don't totally trust it. So I'll probably yeah. go with, you know, with a 530 just to be safe. 25 30 that that's fine a, a 20 with with what you guys are doing i i probably wouldn't recommend because there's a lot of power that gets put down very quickly from a hayabusa and mm, i haven't heard it personally from chain snapping in those situations but honestly yeah you, you'd be okay but with what you guys are doing 525 530 that's that's probably the way to go yeah 520 everyday street riding all day long. My 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 R1 that I race with has a 520 on it. So yeah, you you should be all right. 
You but, guys also carry uh, or offer carbon sprockets, correct? We do not. No carbon, no carbon sprockets. No, we do steel, that, steel and aluminum. But is that something you guys would consider? I've never, I've never even considered that, but I'll take a note. Definitely write that down and consider that. I, I, mean, I was just asking, you know, if there's a, if you feel like there's a market for the guys that you know you guys cater to for carbon sprockets. You know. Yeah. So I mean, with things like that, we typically like like a company like Vortex. We've specialized in steel. We've we've specialized in aluminum. So the people that are coming to us for those, they know that. So I've never entertained the idea of doing a carbon or a composite material for a sprocket. But if there's the market for it, it definitely means that, hey, we'll research that, see what that market looks like. And if we can jump in with a product, we, we certainly will. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because we have the technology now. Um, you know, we've invested in a lot of tech, new technology to start really developing new products and really start being more cutting edge, being first to marketplace. Like that's what Vortex is starting to uh, strive towards. And if if that's a, you know, market sector that we can get into, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. We, yeah. we won't shy away from anything. We'll, we'll say that. I'll tell you, those sprockets um, that he's talking about, because there is a company that makes it, but it's like... <laughs> Oh, what three hundred dollars for a spot? Yeah, they're really yeah. expensive. Yeah, they're they're extremely really expensive. expensive. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, we had a whole conversation about that, Josh. <laughs> 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 whole, whole yeah. I mean, for a yeah. cheaper alternative, you know, you can get our vortex sprockets in different colors and stuff. You know, I'm just saying, just throw. Yeah, yeah, out. yeah, yeah. I actually ordered a sprocket yesterday too for my drag bike. I'm gonna Perfect. try a different setup this season, so Perfect. we'll see. Okay. Um, but um we can move well okay cartel you have any more um exciting questions because mm -hmm. chat hasn't uh lit up as of yet for questioning so um i'm just waiting for us to move into the, the actual racing portion no no, no go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead whatever you guys want to um whatever you want to ask him brother well josh so uh -oh. okay well tell us about your race life so race life i'm originally from just uh just south of boston a little town called rehoboth mass um so there's not a lot of options for racing motorcycles back in the northeast um you're, you're from my way i am from your way i heard that yeah so i'm from rehoboth mass originally that's where i grew up so about 45 50 minutes south of boston yeah yeah, yeah. closer to providence, providence. yes yes so there's really not a lot of options up there. Um, CCS, which is ASRA now, runs one or two events at New Jersey. Um, and then there's NEMRR, which runs at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. So it was, you know, six hour drive to Jersey for me, or it was three hour drive to New Hampshire. So I, I signed up for NEMRR and I started racing that track. Um, and I don't know if anybody knows anything about New Hampshire Motor Speedway, but that track is unique. Um, it's walls everywhere. It's got potholes. It's got paint lines wow. that are wet during the the like dry during, whether it's wet or not. Like it's hey, that's a death trap. That's what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, I've, I've heard of it, but I, I've never been. Yeah, it's it's the Thunderdome. It, it's really <laughs> it's what we call it. Yeah. Um, if you get a chance to do a track day up there, uh, Penguin Penguin School does does a track day there. Um, I recommend doing it just to just to try it, but it's it, it's scary. It's a scary track. Um, so I started racing there. Started off as novice, um, and then last season uh, was bumped up to amateur. Uh, start it did a did a full season amateur there. Um, and then moved out to here to Utah, and I'll be racing at Utah Motorsport Campus, which used to be Miller, and with Utah Sport Bike Association. And this is what I was going to tell you. This is the exciting news. I found out yesterday that I have been promoted to expert, and I will be racing with white plates as an expert out here in Utah. So, oh, <laughs> congratulations! Congratulations! Okay. So, yeah, All super right. excited about that. Super excited. I don't. I don't. 
think I deserve that, but we'll, we'll time, will, time will tell. But okay. Yeah, super excited to be out here and, and, and race with the guys and um, talking about you've community. You've been doing it for four years? What's that? And you've been doing this for four years? You've been racing for four years? Yeah, four years. That's impressive, man. That's uh, impressive. Well, let's put it this way. New Hampshire Motor Speedway, it's – they do they do um like progression based off of lap times just because of how dangerous some of the closing speeds could be at that track you know if you got a guy out there running you know a minute 11 minute 12 lap times and then you got a guy out on the track that's running like a minute 25 minute 26 that closing speed is dangerous on that track it's very short it's very technical um so there being an amateur makes you not it's it's hard to say it but like other tracks it's a little easier to pr progress and i'm not i'm not trying to talk down about anybody or, or say that it's we've got the hardest track by by far we don't but mm -hmm. um you know being able to take those skills that i learned from that track and apply them other places i think i think helps me a little bit better so um yeah, I wouldn't say it's impressive. It's maybe stupid. <laughs> I don't know if that's. <laughs> I don't know, but I appreciate that. Thank you. But but yeah, yeah it, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm 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 super excited, nervous, but super excited. So yeah. What what all went until you get your uh, racer's license? Because I know like, um, I got my race as I told you before. I got my license to race um some years ago. Mm -hmm. The way it looked for me was uh, we essentially had to do what a full day of training. A bunch of track time and then we yep. had like a mock race yeah you know that's exactly it. and um and after that you pass the test then you get your license and you can race that's it it's it's really that simple and i wish people knew it was that simple um what really breaks my heart is being a racer and seeing year after year less and less people showing up and less and less people you know realizing how obtainable it actually is to get out on the track and race. And a lot of the organizations, NEMRR, uh, out here in Utah Sport Bike Association, they offer a super street program where a track day rider can tape up his bike, safety wire his bike, go out onto the track and race and, you know, be introduced to that. And it's really that easy. And it just, it hurts because like, you hear about all these clubs and all these organizations and all these tracks shutting down because there's no interest in it. And it's like guys like me, I would, I would just, if that's all I could do all day, that's all I would do, you know? And, and I'm sure this same for you guys, if you could be on a bike all day, <laughs> I'm sure you would. I you? don't know. I'm getting a little older now. I take a couple of <laughs> Tylenol before I ride. I don't know. Yeah. I've fallen too many times, you know, yeah. Mr. Uh, I rate Barry said, um, thank you. Can you see the comments, Josh? I, I can't No. Oh, okay. Well, uh, you have a couple of people just telling you hi. I'm assuming you know them. So, you know, I, Oh, Barry. Yeah. That's Barry yeah. from uh, Motor United out, out here in Utah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's really that easy. You know, you, if, if you got a bike and it doesn't have to be an, an R1 or a, or Ninja or any, it doesn't have to be like the, the industry is like shifting towards a lot of these upright naked bikes. Those bikes honestly are awesome on the track. Bring it to the track, do it, use the bike for what it's meant to do, you know? Mm. Um, and, and I think once more and more people start to realize that and they go to their first track day and they're like, oh, wow, my bike can go around a corner like that. Hmm, I'm going to, you know, progress and keep doing that. And, yeah. and I get racing's not for everybody. You know, that's a certain mentality and, and everything else. But, you know, just get a bike, go to the track and be a part of that community because it shows the rest of the world like, hey, like Yamaha just did discontinuing the R1. Why? Because nobody's buying those bikes anymore. Nobody's racing anymore. And it just, ugh, it kills me when I heard that because I have, I have an R1. And I'm like, oh no, they get rid of that. Really? So that's why they discontinued the R1? So it's just diminishing sales in that sector. The sport bike sector has always been, in the past few years, it's just been tough to keep up with everybody shifting more towards the upright bikes, the naked bikes, you know, that perform just as well as some of those street bikes. But People don't want to be hunched over like this going to work every day. You know, they'd rather have a nice 
soft ride commute into work and you know and then if they need to take it to the track but chances are they're not going to and that's that's where it's you know the R6 a couple of years ago they just continued the R6 the, the R1 you know when Suzuki pulled out a MotoGP you're starting to see all of these manufacturers start to change their ways based off of what you know the consumer wants and what the consumer is doing and then fortunately it's hurting racing as well you know it's just yeah. it's it's tough and it, it hurts it really does it really does why do you well, think that the, why do you think that the sport is diminishing like that though is it, you think it's it, it, do you feel like maybe it's people think it's too expensive right off the gate and they don't and they don't think about oh i could just take my bike there and fuck it uh, you know let it fly yeah so co cost is one um I, I was i was talking to um caleb a uh, guy that i work with at vortex the other day and we were talking about what it costs for me to, to be out there racing every weekend and i'm i'm spending a few thousand dollars a weekend just in tires fuel parts you yeah, know yeah, no. gear to get out there um so i understand the racing side of things it's but then on the on the consumer side, you know, it's it's a change in the ways. You know, back when I was a kid in high school, everybody wanted the Ninja. Everybody wanted those 1000s. Everybody wanted those bikes. And they were right. seeing, like everybody had one. And now as, you know, the generations have changed <laughs> and people are getting older like myself, I you know, I I struggle to be in a crouch on that bike all the time and and leaned over and doing all the stuff that I do. So I get it. I, I understand the shift in what people are looking for. The government is pushing more for eco-friendly stuff. So we're seeing a lot of electric bikes, with, which I think is really cool. Um, so there's a huge marketplace for that. But like my R1 has however many catalytic converters on it, two or three or whatever. Like, so there, there's all of this coming down from the government to like for emissions and everything else. And so it's cost of motorcycles. It's cost of gear it's it's just a combination of a lot of things unfortunately so yeah it's 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 tough i'd love to see it turn around and you know what if it means me going buying a upright naked bike take it to the track i'll do that i, I, don't, I don't care what i'm on I'll, I'll get on the track oh really yeah i was uh just telling my wife recently i said man uh, stay again because uh, uh I, I was gonna say that me and reap i was talking to reaper a couple of days ago about the cost of you going to the track oh, man. Reaper, Re reaper does a multitude of different mm -hmm. like all, all things motorcycle he does yeah. yeah you know drag to knee dragging you know mm -hmm. all of it he does so mm -hmm. you know come race season it's like i'm broke, you <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> you, you, you're done <laughs> i'm so broke you know yeah. i was telling my wife um so i i shortened my wheelbase off on my booster right because like mm -hmm. My goal or dream was to ride my Busa on track. Dragging yeah. me on my Busa. Yeah. Haven't done it yet. Yeah. But I swear, if I first of all, if I fall, I'm going to be mad because I'm going to tear up a 23 bike. The second thing is I'm playing around in the street, so technically it would be safer on the track, but yeah. it's a big, heavy bike yes. to be on track. And I have a track bike, so why would I take the Busa? Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's a, it's a thing. It's right. just a thing. I hear you. you know, it's just a thing. You know what I mean? Have you ever had one of those where you're just like, you know what? I just, I, I don't know. I want to take a, I don't know, H2 on track. So there's something stupid that doesn't make sense. Yeah, every day of my life I do something stupid that doesn't make sense. So, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm right there with you, dude. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun, though, man. That sounds like a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. And, and here's the thing. I, it's For me, my brain is always, like, I can't ever shut off. And... When I get up to grid and I'm looking at the lights and when the lights go out, it's silence. And I don't even wear earplugs when I race. I don't hear anything. It just, everything shuts off and I go around the, the and I do my laps and I come in and then I'm like, I feel like I just took like a nice warm bath. You know? <laughs> I feel so relaxed and, I, and everybody's like, you should be like, and I'm like, no, I'm like, Oh, and and I wish more people would get that feeling because it's such a great release to just like oh yeah oh to get all that out of there oh so, but yeah and I, and and that's the other thing too like if people 
knew what it felt like to feel that and to go around the track, I, I feel like more people would be like, yeah, sign me up for that. But yeah, to your point, some of it is kind of stupid. <laughs> Definitely. Do you yeah. remember the first time you drug your knee? Oh, geez. Yeah. So um, this was at a track called New York Safety Track way back in uh, back in New, in New York, upstate New York. And this was when I was only doing like track days. I wasn't even racing yet. And that was like my big thing. Like, ah, I got to drag my knee. So I remember going into turn one. And the first time it happened, I thought I broke something. I thought, like, what was that noise? Like, what is <laughs> Yeah. And I, off the track and I look at my knee puck and I'm like, I'm screaming. I'm like, all these guys I don't even know. I'm like, I'm holding up my knee puck. They're like, yeah. And everybody was so excited for me. They didn't even know me. <laughs> they were just yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. and it's things like that, and like the, the community that we have, like where something is to me that was monumental at the time, and then there's guys out there that are doing just extraordinary things on motorcycles, and for them to be so happy for me to be able to like share that and you know like yeah it yeah was, it was just one of those great moments where like the community was just like. Yeah, this guy's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah oh I might God. have to buy another bike, man. This sounds a lot of fun, bro. <laughs> like, it, it, it is, rich, hey, man. It's What's exciting, on? bro. I <laughs> I tell you, bro. Like my first, I think my first time dragging the knee was in the streets, actually. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, I yeah. didn't even get to the track. Yeah, that, it was actually in the streets because I was younger and stupid, and um, I, I didn't have anything else better to do. And then yeah. I ended up going to the track because I kept falling in the street. And um, I took a 1,000 to my first track day, and that probably wasn't the smartest thing to do. <laughs> um, I ended up uh, taping my wife's 600 up, bumming her bike. Yeah. So I told you, my wife's 411. So I would ride yeah. her bike on track, like raise it up for me, ride yeah. the hell out of it, then lower it back down when yeah. I didn't have a track day. And finally saved up, got a track bike eventually. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah. it, but that was probably stupid. Because uh, I've high sided in the streets at 120 mile per hour. That kind of sucked. Nope. Third degree burns and all of this that stuff. That was not like a three. Nope. Yeah, like it's so it's it happened so fast. I didn't even know what was going on. Yeah. I, I thought I was, was leaned over. I I thought I was Josh Dyer, right? I was leaned over. <laughs> <laughs> I was leaned the hell over. I was getting it. I thought I almost had my my elbow on the ground. At least that's what you feel like. Yeah. You know what I mean? You see the concrete out of your peripheral. Yeah. You're like, yeah. I'm fucking low. <laughs> and then I just saw my bike no, you I too, still, and I was just in yeah. the air and then I land and then yeah. it tore the fucking bike up. It was an yeah. S1000 too. Yeah. I oh, drag yeah. elbows all the time, man. All the time. When I crash, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm dragging both elbows. <laughs> hey, I, that's my next goal. Like I want, I want to uh, drag my elbow, but uh, yeah. I haven't, I don't think I've visited any tracks where I think that's feasible or I lack the skill to do it then must be because. You know, you can do it in a parking lot at super low speeds. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Yeah. I swear, I I just, my luck, man, I'm going to hit gravel. I'm going to fall, you know? Yeah. That's why you rent a bike or you borrow somebody else's. Yeah, like my wife, right? (laughs) (laughs) No, because you still have to pay for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) Reaper just learned on the K67 what kind of bill that is. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah, man. You know, actually, and, and I like, so what is uh I'm glad he said that. The K67, what do you think about the BMW, the new one outside of the older models as it pertains to being on track? Because you see Top Rack just did, he won a couple of races, but or do you think they're competitive enough? Really? Oh god. Yeah. Oh, right out of the box. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the, the technology and the research that goes into any BMW, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no question. I mean you know, you, you look at the Ducatis, you look at the BMWs, you look at like what KTM is doing now with like the RC series and things like that. Like the the research that goes into that, yeah, it's 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 a heavy it's a it's a heavyweight hitter. It really is, absolutely. Yeah, I think the Ducati. I think for right now, even though Top Rack's making the BMW great again, I think the Ducati is just yeah uh, leaps and bounds with horsepower above everything oh. else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I feel like the manufacturers eventually are going to step it up a little bit. They have to. They have I, I to. would love to see what I would love to see. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like 
like track machines or like track weapons, but I would love to see like instead of you know Suzuki releasing like an upright naked bike and be like, here's our offering, and then like you know two months later Kawasaki comes with their. I would love to see like what they were doing in the early 2000s of street bikes, like the street bike wars. Like, oh yeah, you're 120 horsepower, we're 125, and we go five miles an hour faster than you. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't need to be about speed or anything, but I would love to see that like competitive edge again with the manufacturers, and maybe do it with the uprights. Maybe do it with you know some of the new bikes that they're trying to release that bring back that like. And I think that really has a lot to do with why racing bikes were so popular in the early 2000s because they were like, it was basically the 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 race wars. They were like, oh, we're yeah. gonna go faster than you. We're gonna, and there was all this hype about it. Do that now. Do that now with the bikes you produce. And like, oh, I would love to see that again. I would love to see that. I feel like a lot of the community would die though. Because, I mean, even when the Blackbird, remember the Blackbird, the Busa, the VX11, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? Even back then, they were dangerous. Yeah. So I, yeah. I'd imagine now, like... Well, I'm not saying it has to be about speed and performance. And, and I'm saying, like, bring back that sort of, like, competitiveness between the companies the, to the, say... The, like, the brand. Like, the brands, yeah. Yeah, like, hey, we're doing, you know, a twin. So, like, the, the 8S Suzuki came out with, like, that bike that's racing in moto america now and that's a great bike and, and we just measured up um uh, uh, uh an 8s and the 8r for suzuki to do rear sets and all that stuff and you know that's going to be featured in moto america like our parts are going to be in, in moto america i would love to see like those brands start to like do that again you know it doesn't necessarily have to be like we got more horsepower we got more speed but Hey, you know, like all, all right. around, all around, Legendary. like hey, yeah, oh, yeah. They, they came out yeah. with this. We, we we came with this. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I think that would be very very interesting, man. Like, mm. like for example, like the BMW. Uh, yeah. What was the last the, the HP four the twenty seventeen mm -hmm. or the twenty eighteen? Mm -hmm. You know, so imagine if Suzuki would have came out with their version, you know, right. of something like the HP four. The you race know, bike you're talking about? The race? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like yeah, every, yeah, every yeah. That would be cool. Like yeah. that, and, you know, and they only make X amount. Right. So even if they don't make a whole lot, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. let's say 300. You're telling me 300, they're not going to sell out of 300 bikes? Uh, I, if I had the money, I'd go buy a limited edition bike right now if you, I could. You know what I mean? I know, right? But, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, Imagine what was the race when it first came that. out? Yeah. The race was, what, 80000 or ninety thousand dollars or something like that. That the HP race. Yeah, yeah. Who? I mean, who? Well, no, I'm not gonna lie. I do see these older guys on they track days with super yeah. majors and stuff. Oh. Like I, I do see them. I don't know what I, they do for a living, but I see them. I was down in Homestead, Miami, uh, for an ASRA event uh, race, and the day before was a track day. And I won't mention any any names, but a guy brought a Ducati to the track, brand new, beautiful. Oh my god! Cut it in three pieces. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> in turn one. <laughs> yeah, in fucking oh, turn one. Right? Yeah. They they yeah, they man. basically brought it back to the garage in a dump truck, and it was just like, oh, it broke oh, it broke my heart. And, and garage that's shame, wild. Man. Well, you know yeah. what? He probably went to the dealership that day and got, got another, another one. You know, like so, but yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the money, weird, if the money's man. there, they'll, they'll sell definitely. <laughs> What's your tire? I, so. I was gonna get into the tires. Yeah. Uh, so, right tires. now, Cartel, like you know, Cartel said it earlier, man. I'm having some drama with the tires. So um, I know you race. What's your tire of choice at the moment? Pirelli. Um, so I started racing on Dunlops. And Dunlops are a fantastic tire if you can keep heat in the carcass. Um Loudon, the track that I raced back at New England, the weather is oh, typically yeah. cooler. It's typically it, there's a lot of there's a lot of tight turns, so you can keep some heat in the carcass, but it's it's not enough to really make that tire perform to what it should be. Not to say that that tire is not absolutely fantastic elsewhere, because it is. I've used that tire in like New York Safety Track. I've used that that tire in Thompson. 
Um, and I know plenty of guys that run the Dunlops and swear by them. I made the choice to jump to Pirelli because Pirelli has a little soft, softer carcass and it gives me a little bit more feedback. I like the bike dancing around underneath me. So I know, I know where I am and I know how to control going into a turn. If, you know, if I'm exiting a corner and I'm feeling it sliding out, I want the Pirelli to tell me that's what I'm doing. Where the Dunlop, it's, it's traction. It's, you've got traction and then you don't, you know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> it's a little too much where yeah. with the Pirelli and I, I couldn't control the Dunlop doing that where I know plenty of riders that are well better riders than I can, but that I am that can control the Dunlops. I, I just couldn't with my riding style and my pace. I, I just, I didn't have the ability to, to keep the heat in those tires. So Pirelli was a good alternative. Gives me a lot more feedback, gives me a lot more, um, Gives same grip, but I I can feel the bike moving out, exiting a corner, and I know I'm like okay, I'm right on the edge, and coming into a corner, same thing. I know I'm right on the edge. You know, can back it into a corner. I can feel it a little bit better. It's so a better reference tire. I feel like like yeah, it, exactly, exactly, and it it just it talks to you. It just lets you know what's going on. Um, I, I, those are the only two I've ever I've ever raced with. Um, track days, I used to run a Q3, uh, no Q Q4, the Dunlop Q4s, and those are great track day tires, absolutely great. And then I could literally take them and drive on the street. They're a DOT yeah. legal track day tire, you know, um, so they're fantastic. Dunlop offers a lot of great tires for the street, um, the combination, and then race tires. But Pirelli for me was just it, it gives me that feel. That Pirelli's for me. I know other guys that run, you know, the Michelins. They swear by the Michelins. I, you know, I know um, plenty of guys that, that race those back home. They they swear by those too. So it really, it's 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 preference. It's almost like a Yamaha guy saying to a Kawasaki guy, "Ah, Kawasaki suck. They're the worst." And I'm, yeah, saying, yeah. I'm a Yamaha guy, but right, right. It's, it's the same thing. It's just. You get on a Kawasaki and you're like, it fits me perfect. It's the best bike ever. And then you'll get on a Yamaha and be like, what the heck is this? Or vice versa. You yeah. know, so it's, right. it, it's really just preference. And I mean, at the level that, you know, club races are at, and just before you get to like MotoGP level, like expert racers, you know, that those tires are, they, we are not putting those tires to the limits. You know what I mean? They, they've got more in them. So especially me, I, there's a lot more I can put into those tires that I just can't yet. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just really about preference and what the tire feels like under the bike. And as long as you like that feeling, that's the tire for you. It really is, you know? So I'll never push everybody to, you have to buy Pirellis because I use them. No, use the tire that makes you get around the track comfortable. Comfortable, yeah, yeah. It's hey, a, it hey, hey, Josh. Is uh, I think Caleb is saying good looking vortex guy. And yeah, I, you like that? I was gonna give Caleb a shout out at the very end. Thank you, Caleb, for making <laughs> this possible. <laughs> Caleb helped me break this down. Kyle and Caleb from Vortex helped me break this down to get it. In my, yeah, <laughs> get a little ass apart in here. So. And they're yeah. not getting it back. This is going to fit perfect on my wall, and I'm leaving it here. <laughs> oh, yeah? No, that's, yeah? That's pretty sick. That, yeah. That's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's huge, but, you know, it, it, it works. I actually thought that was one of those green screen things initially. See, that <laughs> was a <laughs> banner, right? No, that's what I thought. I thought it's it was like banner, one of those professional right? green yeah, screen really background good. things. But it's real. It's an actual banner. So it yeah. would have been now that you say it would have been way easier just to download a, a picture and put it in the background. <laughs> yeah. yeah, technically, yeah. Next time, next time. <laughs> so I, you know, recently I just invested in a bunch of Q5, um, yeah. but I think that was because I'm not running the pace that I was when I was using yeah. the Pirellis. So mm -hmm. uh, perhaps I'll get back to that pace, but like yeah. right now I'm not, and I think. They look like they're sticky, but they're not going to last. I, I just don't feel like they're going to last several track days. Yeah. So the the, the Q4, Q5, the, the the track day tire, um, pretty much like any any track day tire. Even like some of the dual compounds, like the Bridgestones and stuff. Uh huh. Um, they'll last you, you know, 
they'll last you plenty of time on out on the street, you know, because you're not really putting in work. You're not putting in effort. You know, you're not putting the tire to the pace. You start bringing them to the track. You know, you're leaned over. You're you're using the whole tire. You're flexing the carcass. You're bringing them up the temp. You're cooling them down. When you start doing that, no, the, the longevity of those sort of hybrid street track day tires, yeah, they're they're not going to get you the the mileage, but they're going to give you the confidence on the track, you know, and, and that's the thing. And like I said, I, I ran the Q4 um, for pretty much most of my track days because, um, you know, when I go to a track day, unless it's for practice, I'm not really putting pace down. I'm just out there working on uh, like body positioning and working on like, you know, take, I'm, I'm running like 75, 80% pace, you know what I mean? And, and just taking a, taking a little bit off and those tires are fine. They're, they're, they're more than enough, but yeah, to your point, you know, a Q5, if you're going to go tear it up for a weekend on the track and then expect to, you know, get, you know, 10, 10,000 miles out of it. Right, right, it's, right. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. I guess my next question would be, are you using warmers on these street tires? So that you can talk to 20 different people and get 20 different answers on this. So um, Q, Q4s, uh, and I spoke to the Dunlop rep, and he's like, you don't have to. He's like, you can. It doesn't hurt. Um, I personally always ran warmers, not on the highest temp, um, but, you know, on like the low setting just to keep some heat in the tire. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not really like at that point, it's heat cycles that you have to worry about bringing them up to temp, cooling them down, bringing them up to temp, cooling them down. That's when the tire starts to degrade. Um, and then like the oils from the rubber start to come out. It kind of gets a little slick, yeah. but I've always used warmers at track days. Um, it, it doesn't hurt, but it certainly helps, you know? So, uh, but now, I mean, I just, I run, I run race slicks on everything, so I I have to run to run more. Yeah, but yeah I, I mean, invest in a set of Vortex. I actually have yours. I have yours and Moto D. Okay. Um, yeah, I have get some sets. Vortex tire warmers and, and 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 just have that like to be rest assured that you know you don't have to worry about heating up the tires, you know, and taking it easy for a couple of laps to build up heat. You know, you can go out there. And go into turn one, knowing you've got the grip, keep the pace, keep the heat in the tires. Yeah, it it, it doesn't hurt. Personally, I, I always did. I always ran one person. Yeah. Yeah, well, I probably should have had that. I tried to get insurance money from the wife, man. I, yeah. yeah, I caused her to fall. <laughs> oh, man. And she's still paying for it to this day. Oh, yeah. You know? But it's okay. She has yeah. Q5 now, so it's yeah. all good. Oh, yeah. 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 Throw, yeah. throw, throw warmers on those on, you know, you don't have to put them on the highest setting. And the great thing about the vortex uh, tire warmers, you can dial in whatever temperature you want, you know? So, you know, throw those on at like 110, 120, 120 degrees. That's, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. One, one question I have for you, Josh, is yeah. as you gradually grew, uh, became more knowledgeable on how you set up your motorcycles on the track, how much was weight distribution uh, a factor for you? Or how do you feel like is a factor uh, in the bikes that you build or the bikes that you race? So first things first is ergonomics on the bike. So, and that's kind of what we were talking about earlier, where I can get onto a Kawasaki and feel like I've never been on a motorcycle before. And, or get on a Suzuki and feel like I've never been on a motorcycle before. And then get on a Yamaha and I'm like, okay, it feels a little bit better, right? Like a good baseline mm -hmm. with the ergonomics and especially, and I'm just going to keep shamelessly plugging Vortex because I have to, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, with, with like our rear sets and our clip ons and, and everything we offer to be able to adjust all of that, to get the proper weight distribution, especially, you know, if you're, you're, you're going into a turn, you're putting all that weight on the outside peg. If you're, if you're, peg is in the wrong position or the ergonomics are not set up right it's gonna throw everything off and there's like it's taken me forever to dial in exactly where everything needs to be set to get the proper weight distribution of not only you know how far i am forward on the bike whether i'm using um 
our new zero offset clip-ons um, that we're going to be having in stock, I think next week, if Caleb's still on, uh, verify, verify that for me. Um, or if you're going to use our standard clip-ons, which push, push the bar a little bit forward, all of that plays into the weight distribution of how you are on the bike. I know plenty of guys who can take a stock motorcycle and go out there and run record paces on on those guys they don't count they're just they're too bad <laughs> but mm -hmm. for like the regular folks like me you need you need to feel right on the bike first and then that plays into what the weight distribution is and like how you can push the bars out when you're going into a turn and you can get you can get off the bike better and if my you know if my foot peg on is is set too far forward, I might not be able to get my knees in those right positions. So it, it all affects everything. So our biggest thing with Vortex is ergonomics. You purchase our clip-ons, you purchase our rear sets, you can adjust all of those ergonomics to give every rider the perfect weight distribution when you're going into a corner to be able to get off the bike and feel comfortable and feel confident and not be hanging on like I've done a few times going into yeah. like, oh crap, what's going on? So it's it's huge, and and that's that's one of the things. And not only on the track, but like even on the street, like even if you're commuting to work, just being able to feel comfortable going into a turn. Let's say the conditions yeah. aren't a hundred percent. Let's say it's raining, you know, and yeah. you have a little bit less traction. You want to be able to feel a little bit more of that control. So you dial in those ergonomics sets up your weight distribution a lot better and you can feel the mechanics of yourself connected to the bike a lot better and it, it'll just it'll make you feel more confident and it, in turn make you a better rider honestly yeah. yeah 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 do you feel like track days makes you gives you the skill to survive better in the street so i know a bunch of guys that went to track days and tried to do what they learned on the track on the street I don't ever recommend that. What I recommend track days for, if you're going to main, maintain riding on the road, is learning the skills to get yourself out of trouble. Um, I know plenty of guys who can go into a dealership, they'll drop 20 grand on a 1,000 and think they're Valentino Rossi, and it doesn't end well. And I've unfortunately lost a lot of friends to that. What I recommend is you go to a track day or you go to a, a coaching program at a track day that teaches you the skills to, hey, if you're, in a, if you're in a turn and something happens, you know how to be able to get out of that lean and be able to, to escape danger. I never recommend anybody learning what they learn on the track to go try to drag me on um, – well, oh. you'll know Route 95, <laughs> you know, <laughs> these, right? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, or, or around Boston, you know what I mean? But yeah. um, track days are a great way to learn the skills you need to be able to, I hate to say it, survive on the street. You know, it's just, there is too much, there's too much shit on the road that just pops up and, you, you know, a car blows yeah. a stop sign. What are you going to do? If you go to a track day, you know how to avoid that stuff, you know, and they teach you those things. So, you know, it makes you a better rider all around. Absolutely. But don't think, hey, I went to a track day. I learned all this stuff. And now I'm going to go race my buddies yeah. out on the street. I just I've, I've lost too many friends. And I, hmm. I'm sure you guys probably have, too. And it's just it's not it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Do that. Do that shit on the, on the track. Have fun. If you go down. Your bike's going to slide off into the grass. You're going to slide off into the grass. You're going to pop up. Your ego's going to be hurt, but that's about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's basically learn to live to ride another day. <laughs> this is what it is, you know? Yeah. yeah. You can't gauge at the track. You can't gauge elements out in the, in the real world. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And there, there's been times, and why I won't ride on the street anymore is how many times I'm just going down the road and somebody will just pull out in front of me. And I was uh, actually doing a lot of research on this. And there's a lot of studies that show drivers in cars will see, physically see a motorcycle, but it doesn't register in their brain that it's another vehicle. Now, if I was driving a truck or a car, they're going to see that and they're going to say, oh, there's a car or a truck coming. I'm, I can't pull out. 
it's not that they're like, oh, for, it's just a bike. I'm going to cut them off. It's just that something in the brain is saying it's not a car. It's not a truck. It doesn't, it doesn't it. register. Yeah. So there's a lot of research around that. And I've, I've been through that. I Car cuts me off. I'll come up to him on the red, red light and I'll be like, what are you doing? They're like, I don't even know. I saw you, but I like, and they're just, they, they don't realize that it happened, you know, and it, and it happens too much. It just, it happens too much. That's scary, man. That's, that just, that's scary when you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because me, me and Reap, Reap, Reap does a lot of riding with his wife, you know, yeah. and just the thought of that, you know, yeah. that how people really like register that in yeah. their mind. Yeah. And I'm not saying by any means, I'm not saying don't ride on the street. I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. Just be aware. In picture, you know, when you're coming to a stoplight and you see a car ready to turn, anticipate the worst. Yeah. You know, prepare, be prepared for the worst. Always keep a good line of sight, you know, just and keep in your mind scanning scanning around just keeping you know being active and a lot of people say like that's too much for me i can't ride on the street because it's it and that's why i i stopped riding because i'm more worried about everybody else and i can't enjoy it you know but yeah. that's just me you know but i'm not saying anybody should not go right out on the street if you're going to just please just pay attention that's it yeah i you know i really a cartel so here we go I have to ask you because a lot of guys that watch this is um, in the road race community, and we've had this this discussion in the past. So here we go. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry, I just got to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking it, and I, I was like, "Well, is this the right time? It's the right time." Okay, out of roll racing, I know you know what that is because it's the new hotness. They 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 put a term to what we did on, you know what I mean, on the interstate back in the day. I yeah, know drag racing. Mm -hmm. and road racing mm -hmm. which is more difficult in your opinion uh i gotta i gotta get going <laughs> <laughs> amazing political answer. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh I mean, my, my dinner's ready yeah I gotta, I gotta go. no uh that that's an awesome question um honestly i wouldn't say that anything is more difficult than the other okay. from and i'm gonna be i'll i'm gonna give you the the politically correct answer but then i'll give you i'll, I'll give you my, my okay okay Let me so back here. all right you're on a motorcycle roll racing you're you're dealing not only with you know the race itself and but you're dealing with other elements you're dealing with people out on the street you're dealing with you know things beyond your control um right. drag racing um you know i i I know a, a bunch of guys that drag race and a bunch of girls that drag race and I couldn't do what they do. And just like there's, you know, a couple of drag racers that can't road race and, and vice versa. And dude, if you put me on an R1 and tried to put me in a roll race right now, I'd launch that thing to the moon. <laughs> like, I, I, you know what I'm saying? So they all have their sort of um, difficulties. Um, with that being said, I mean, you know, you guys are already going in a straight line, and all you're doing is hitting the throttle. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know I knew it. Gosh, I, I, I knew it. I knew it. I was just like, I, I was waiting for the punchline. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. yeah. Well, I'm only kidding. I am only, I'm only kidding. I'm yeah. only kidding. No, honestly, like, I, on a, if, if any, for me, and I know there's people that have different opinions, but you're getting on a motorcycle, you're getting out there, and you're doing it. I don't give a shit if it's, you're taking it down to the, you know, to the, the, the meet on a Sunday afternoon to, to hang out with your friends and, and, you know, get some coffee and then drive it at home and it sits in the garage for the rest of the week. Or if you're out there racing Moto America, or if you're roll racing, or if you're doing it, I have nothing but respect for anybody who throws their leg over a motorcycle and, and does what they do. Honestly, it's so I'm, 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 please don't, don't. I, 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 you know, I, me and cartel like so we have these conversations yeah. all the time we talk yeah. like every day several yeah. times a day yeah and yeah. um you know sometimes we discuss the dynamics of the different facets of riding mm -hmm. and i'm just like people think that they're so like yeah each one has its merits so it's all yeah. good you know yeah. that's what no like, and like i said there's a certain skill set involved with with all types of riding that like i said 
I, I couldn't go do what you guys do. I no way. Then, you know, I, I top speed scare the crap out of me. You know, I went, I bought my, my R1 and I was like, let's take it on the highway and see what it can do. I got up to 153, 154, hanging on for dear life, like screaming in my helmet, like, wow, what am I doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh my God. I was like, nope, nope. Not gonna do so you guys are going well beyond that. So I have nothing but respect for that. But like, but when I go to the track, uh -huh. And I, you know, on like 125 top speed on the straightaway at Loudon on my R6, you know, maybe Homestead, I was like 130, whatever, on an R6. I don't remember. It's around those numbers. But like there, I'm not thinking that because, you know, there isn't a minivan next to me. You know, there isn't all the stuff going yeah. on, you know. So like I, nothing but respect. Absolutely nothing but respect. Josh, they got guys. <laughs> roll racing that can do well over 200 miles per hour oh, yeah. thing. I, I i don't know there's the real 200 mile per hour club and these guys are doing it mm -hmm. you know, yeah. i'm too fat for it but i i give them props yeah, me too uh, man. <laughs> i give them props because yeah, i can't I got, do I it you know with me. oh yeah mike yeah his turbo my, my the owner here has a turbo jigsaw and uh yeah that, that's uh, definitely well over 200 mile an hour oh, yeah. Right there, you know, but nope. um, yeah, me, me and Reed talk about this all the time. You know, uh, it, yeah. it's very, it's very interesting sure it's it, the, uh, yeah. the dynamics from different riders that, yeah. you know, compete in, in the different aspects of, of uh, motorcycles, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. very controversial at the end of the day. It's kind of fun. It is. Yeah. And, you know, like, cause I also get the guys that are like, Oh, going around in circles is boring. And I'm like, Okay, I mean, it, it, to me, going in a straight line is boring. But I, at the end of the day, again, it's it's nothing but respect for anybody in the community because the way I look at it is, the motorcycle community, you know, it's it's not really that big in the United States, as as you guys already know. I mean, your your group of friends, you pretty much know everybody that rides in your area. You know what I mean? And yeah. then if you race, you pretty much know just that community and if you do this you know that you know so i don't care if you know somebody pulls up to to me on a stoplight on a on a on a bagger or something on a harley or on an indian i have the same respect for that guy that i do for you that i do for anybody you know so it, it to me i know it's super controversial but it, it's at the end of the day we're all doing what we love and it involves motorcycles yeah. so who cares? Let's, you know, like if you guys called me up and said, Hey man, we're going on a run. I'm going to, I'm going to be there. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, you know? And if I said, Hey guys, I'm going to be in town, come check out the races. You know, I'm, I'm sure you guys would go to the races. So it's, we got to keep that community strong, keep the community building, keep people in it, you know, keep people excited. So I, it don't matter to me. You got a bike. It's fine. Hey, <laughs> cartel. So like at the track, um, one of my favorite tracks is NCM, National Corvette Museum's track. And it's relatively close. It's about like an hour and some change from me. So you go on, you hit a straightaway, and then all of a sudden you have to like literally slow down and turn. How do you deal with that? Because to me, it's so much going on trying to control the bike and then get ready for a turn. Like, how do you, as a racer anyway, how do you deal with that? Because yeah. cause that's, that's, that, oh my God. Sometimes... I get false neutrals and I just go straight. I'm like, to hell with this. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. False, yeah. Sometimes the BM, my S1000 to do it, bro. It, it, it's hit, oh, it's, no, BMWs are good for false neutrals. False man. neutrals, yeah. man. And you can't do anything. You know, I lose power and then I just have to go straight. So my R6 is notorious, uh, notorious for false neutrals. And there's nothing scarier, especially at, at, at Loudon. There's the back NASCAR straight that we go down and you're literally full throttle heading towards a wall that and you have to one of our turns turn three and four it's a wall it's a cement wall and i've i've hit false neutrals going into there and you i have no engine brake i have nothing so it comes down to what we were talking about earlier get to the track and practice that have it happen. Understand how to get out of that situation, you know, because there's been times I've hit false neutrals and I'm like, I'm going to ditch this thing into the wall because I don't have, I have no engine braking. I have nothing. I'm, this is the end of it. And it's just like, no, nope, trust the bike, 
Throw it into the corner. Throw it into the corner and hold. That's it. And you know yeah. what? I would yeah, rather. That's actually happened to me once where yeah. as I was going over the lean, I was breaking down too hard and it went neutral. Yeah. And the bike tried to stand me back up and I'm like, oh, shit. Nope. And, you know, I just leaned. Yeah. And tried to pull in the clutch and tried to yeah. figure it out. But like, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'd rather low side in a situation like that um, than try to fight it and uh, go straight into it. Side. You know, or, or high side or catch the grip and then and then high side. So, high siding, high siding looks like a shitty time, man. It's it's from, from the it's videos I've seen. It is not fun. It is not fun. I, luckily, I've had two high sides without a crash. Literally, like my feet were straight up in the air, and I'm looking down at the bike, and I'm like, "This is gonna hurt." And I came down on the bike and was able to like, like get wow, yeah. really wow. Oh, that is that is an awful feeling because there's yeah, I've seen. Do. Good, man. And it looks like crazy, it, it must have slingshot you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. But Reed, to, man, be careful out there, brother. You know, I don't want to have to do this podcast without you because hey, you're bro. Cool. You know what I mean? Man, I, I've fallen twice at the track. One was a rain day, the other was an Aprilia. He 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 ran, he he caught my line and then we ran into each other. Yeah. But technically I didn't run into him. He kind of you know what I mean, Josh. Like he yeah. He, he ran into me kind of sort of. Yeah. I ran off track. I, I was able to keep the bike upright, but uh, yeah. he tore up my plastic so, so. Oh, yeah. I mean, it happens. But, I mean, to answer your question, the best way to prepare, uh -huh. go to the track. Learn it. Learn learn what the bike can do in a safe, controlled environment. There's no cars. Mm -hmm. There's no cops. Go have fun. You know what I mean? So, you, and then you start to learn things that will transition, like trail breaking into a corner, you know, um, when to start to get on the throttle exiting corners. Like you start to learn all those things to control the bike to the point where if a false neutral happens or something, somebody cuts into your race line or something. Oh, I've done that before. Eh, whatever. Fine. Somebody cuts me off into a corner. I'll stand the bike up a little bit. I'll get back into it, get back mm -hmm. on the throttle. I'll get them in the next corner. Or if it's just me, like those false neutrals or something heading towards that wall, it's, trusting that i've been through it before it's mm -hmm. not something i haven't seen before and i know i've got plenty of traction i know the bike can handle it get my body position correct get my weight transferred correctly power through that corner and then you know and, and escape the danger or escape you know the what the worst thing that could happen you know whatever your low side or or worse you could you could high side but Honestly, the way to prepare for it is just do it. Repetition. Just keep doing it. And I know you can't really train a false neutral going into a corner. No, you, you, yeah. But, Unless you do it on purpose, I guess. You yeah, I mean, purpose. there's, you know, but the, the best place to, for it to happen, learn that at the track, you know, because if that happens out on the street and you have to stand the bike up in a corner and you go running straight through that corner, there's a car coming around that corner. You know, it, it's. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, the yeah. best way to prepare for it is just, you know, repetition, learn, learn your bike, learn everything about that bike, push it to the limits, knowing what it can handle, because they can handle a lot, a lot more than you think, you know? Yeah. Just watch a Moto America race, watch a Moto GP race, watch a World Superbike race. Those bikes are designed to do that, you know? So, yeah. Or yeah. you can have a 400 or a 250 pass you like you stand still on a 1000, which <laughs> happens regularly. Now for yeah. real, like on track, that oh. uh, you'll have a two fifty fly past you, and you're just like, "Are you serious right now?" Oh yeah, oh, yeah. been there. <laughs> been you there. know, like I'm on a one thousand, and then when it straightens up, you're good. I had and a guy do that to me. So and yeah. they just come right around you. You just oh, like, yeah. "Holy shit!" You know what I mean? What the fuck is this? You know what's even more degrading is when they come around you on a four hundred and they tap their tail, like, "Hey, follow me." Like, yeah, follow me, like they're a coach, wow. asshole. That's just respectful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Been there. <laughs> Been yeah, there. Wow. yeah. The coach isn't. Yeah, but cartel. I, you know, I think. Um, I'm talking to him all the time about like I just can't wait to get to back to the track. But I'm kind of in a pickle right now because I'm trying to prepare all of the bikes, like I was telling you earlier. So it's it's. Uh, I don't know. It's expensive for me. It's expensive. You know. It is. So well, what am I supposed to do to 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 become a racer? Sell drugs? Like what? How? What am I supposed to do? Because <laughs> it costs me a thousand dollars a weekend for just track days. Start an OnlyFans. 
Oh well, I don't. Know. Well, let me look at my feet, man. Feet like, picks, bro. Feet picks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Josh, I, I tell Reap all the time, man. I'm like Reap. The time is coming, man, where you're about to be busy pretty much every weekend because yep. he's such a big fan of the sport. Yeah. As a, as far as myself, I I pretty much do only roll racing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's not as, especially in Massachusetts. Yeah. You know the roll racing, which hence is why I'm in uh, Florida right now. Yep. You know, um, it, it's just not really that big, and hopefully, I can change that or, or bring a. a, a bigger a bigger crowd yeah. to that in massachusetts but yeah. you know we have about a four month window of, of uh nice weather yeah and then that's it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. I, i'm crying to uh yeah. to get to get uh to get some good stuff uh over here in florida yeah but i do have one question for you josh uh sure. before i have to sign off sure. um, and uh for the future of vortex right and for yourself as a racer what is what is the goal or, or what is the the picture that you have in your mind for the for the, the business and for yourself personally oh awesome great question so um i have i have such a passion for just the sport in general for motorcycles and to be a part of vortex um it it just like Today I was I was sitting at work and I was doing some designs and I was actually thinking about tonight I'm gonna be on on here chatting with you guys and I was like, wow, my life doesn't suck, you know? And I, I started thinking about that and the passion that I have for, for what we do and what Vortex is as a brand and what Vortex has built throughout the years. My goal personally is just to continue to keep Vortex as you know, uh, that brand that everybody knows. I want to go to Vortex because they've got these parts and they, they perform and they, you know, and that's like the passion that I have for it. Like I put that into everything that I do at, at, at Vortex and all the designs and, you know, I was measuring a bike this week and I'm like, I'm like, oh, I, I got these great ideas and all this stuff. And I'm, I'm always envisioning like, how to improve and, and how do we bring Vortex to that next level? Um, my goal is we want to be first to the marketplace with everything, whether it's rear sets, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, case cover, frame sliders. We want to be the first out there to say, hey, look, Vortex cares about the guys out on the bikes. We, because we do, you know, um, the the owner, Matt, he, he was a racer, years ago and he he started this business down in florida in his garage and him and i have talks daily you know and it in the passion that he still has for it and the passion that caleb and kyle in the in the front office have for it like you just we want to be we just we we don't necessarily need to sell a hundred million dollars worth of stuff but we want to show the world that we care about everybody on a motorcycle and and that's the passion and that's what the goal is for me is to bring that into vortex and be like hey you got a question you're personally talking to me caleb or kyle like my my business card has my personal cell phone number on it if you need to call me and ask me a question call me and ask me a question and i will i will do the best i can to help you know so there's that personal touch to show that we we're there. We care. We yeah, certainly care. Yeah. Almost and direct to consumer kind of a feel. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Because he I ride, I race. Um, Kyle, he's into um like Porsches and, and, and those supercars and he does he does that stuff. And Caleb has had motorcycles and you know, we're we're all a part of this racing community, you know, and, and that's what we're trying to still be passionate about and show the world like, hey guys we're, we're one of you, we're with you guys, you know? So, um, and I, I think that's, that's the goal for me to, you know, come into Vortex and really just sort of remind the world, like, Hey guys, we're, we're one of you, man. <laughs> like, Call me up. We'll talk, you know? And, right. and, and then as far as the racing goes, um, you know, it was a huge, a huge thing for me to come out to Utah, um, and, and, you know, become an expert racer and, and be racing this season with Utah Sport Bike Association. Super, super excited to be out there. 
um, racing with my new family, my new friends, you know, guys that I haven't even met yet. We've only talked on Instagram and they're supporting me and, and really quick. Cause I know, I know you got to jump quick, but when I moved out here um, about a week after I moved out here, my trailer and all my gear, everything was stolen. Really? I was like, I'm, I'm screwed. I can't race. I, I, Luckily, my motorcycles were in my office, but everything else, my, all my custom leathers from uh, from Anthem Racing. Wow. Uh, my sponsor, he does he does all my leathers, so check out AnthemRacing.com. Um, all my custom leathers, my all my gear, helmets, gloves, you name it. The trailer that I converted into a, a toy hauler, just furniture, televisions, gone, right? Short story long. People heard about this and reached out to me and they're like, dude, I'm going to donate a helmet to you. I'm going to donate gloves. I'm going to donate a suit. Um, my buddy really? Bam back home was like, I'm shipping you out a suit right now. Um, Anthony Norton, who will be racing out here. Uh, I'll be racing out here with him. He's like, dude, I got a helmet. I'm sending you a helmet. I'm sending you gloves. I don't care if I never win a race. I don't care if I finish last every time. The fact that I'm going to be out on the track with those guys that care so much about somebody they've never even met. Yeah. That's to me, I'm, I've already achieved everything I need in racing because I made lifelong friends in this community that I'll tell you right now, I would do the same for them tomorrow at the drop of a hat. I would do the same for those guys because they didn't have to do that. Nobody had to, the people that donated to me, you know, everybody back home, it was just, it, it was one of those moments where it like humbles you and you're just like, oh yeah. my God, I don't care if I never, I don't care if I never, <laughs> I can finish last. The rest, as long as I'm out there spinning laps with those guys and girls, that's it. I, I've achieved everything I need in racing. That's it right there. Yeah. Uh, the camaraderie on track is like awesome. Yeah. Um, we do have a question for, for you in chat i think i can show this so you can see it uh yes from el diablo can you see that josh yep a 14 what um thinking he says vx14 14, or 14 r yeah it's probably a 14 or 14 r okay um personally i don't know i'm 90 percent sure we do caleb who i think might still be on here would be able to answer that but i'm going to tell you what First thing Monday, well, we open, so uh, 8 o'clock Mountain Time. So 8 o'clock, call in, talk to Caleb or Kyle, and they're going to point you in the right direction. As the guy who designs all this stuff, I have no idea. <laughs> 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 hey, I could, hey. <laughs> At least you're honest. No, no, no. So, so obviously, like, I know, like, you know, we do conversions and stuff because I converted all my stuff over too, but I don't, I don't know the – without having it in front of me and being right. Like, I, I, I don't know, but call in Monday, uh, Kyle, Caleb, they, they will make sure they take care of you. Hey, I tell you what, Josh, um, before cartel, um, and, and, and perhaps, um, I guess we've been on for at least an hour and some change now. Yeah. Um, Caleb and Kyle, primarily Caleb. So this is what I did to him a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I was man. asking cartel. I was bothering cartel every day. <laughs> Wait, I just got a text. We might have. Oh no, he just said nice work. I don't. I don't know if uh, we might get an answer from Caleb. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I'm sorry. Sorry. Look to at him. He's even working now. Like yeah, he's. he's yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he emailed me. So yeah. um, I had a problem with finding a 520 uh, sprocket for what I have going on in, in, mm -hmm. on my booster, right? Yeah. So I'm talking to Cartel Man, and he's trying to help me figure it out. And finally, I'm like, okay, I got to call Vortex. So I'm like, where the hell is Caleb, man? Yeah. I go back and forth emailing pictures and everything. Caleb is on it. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I, I just gave the hell up because basically it was like, hey, don't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, I would advise against this. However, I think we can do, we cross reference the part yes. and then you can do this. Yeah. But I don't think it makes any sense. So what do I do? I'm like, okay, I have the option. Hit up Cartel. Hey, yeah. man, 
I'm fat. I don't know if I should put a 520 on my body. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then like, that's the downward spiral that we get on. And yeah, yeah, hours later, we're, yeah, we're still trying to figure like, it out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because sometimes you might know the answer, but you just want to hear someone else say it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I hear you. I hear like, no, yeah, he's, man. He's he him, him and Kyle. They're they're the two. You got a you got a question about anything to do with gearing and sprockets and all and all that stuff and all of our product lines. Those guys. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'll be sitting in the design office doing stuff, and I'll be like, "What the heck?" And then I'll go into the, "Hey, Caleb, have you?" Oh yeah. Brrr, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah." Like he That's bails yeah. me out all the time. So. Man, I tell you, when my wife wrecked, um, one of my so some of her parts obviously got bent and yeah. messed up, and I didn't want to buy the whole thing. So yeah. all I did was I took a picture of it, and I was like, "Okay, Caleb, this is tore up. What do I need?" Mm -hmm. I sent him a video. He's like, yep, you need this, 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 and this. Yeah. I was like, well, see, good. He saved me some damn money. Yeah. And he knows the part numbers off the top of his head, too, wow. without even looking. So, yeah. Yeah, he's probably a nerd as well. <laughs> we, all <are>. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. <laughs> but, I mean, outside of that, you know, um, I think that was primarily the the only question we got from chat. Yeah, and um, we've been on for quite some time. Obviously, I appreciate it again. You know, we both appreciate you coming on. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Gosh, man, I, I will say um, you opened up my eyes majorly tonight with just the humility and uh, how kind you were and how graceful you were talking about just like competitors and stuff like that, because that's mm -hmm. not something that me and Reef have encountered very often. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, in the small time that we've been doing the podcast together, you know, yeah. so the the camaraderie there is, is really nice and and you know leaves me hopeful for the future. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, oh and, yeah. You know, at, at yeah. the end of the day, man. No, we really appreciate having you on, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. thank you very much for your time. I appreciate yeah. you guys. Thank you so much for having me. This this was awesome. And like I said, if you guys. If I'm ever, well, so I'm going to come back and visit. I'm going to hit you up. We'll go out for a ride, definitely, when I get back up into Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Let me know, brother. Let yeah. me know. And if I'm ever hey. in Tennessee, I'll make sure I, I hit you up. Hey, man. come to NCM. Or, or um, well, you're going to be racing, though. So, I mean, yeah, that's neither here nor there. Racing. You know what I mean? You'll be racing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so unless you're doing a track day, like it's not yeah. gonna work itself out. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. No, I'll make it, I'll make it happen, man. I'll make it happen. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'd, well, I'd love to cover you with some videography, uh, Josh. So maybe I'll hit you up and talk to you. That'd be that. that'd be fantastic. That'd be awesome. Hell yeah. You, you know. But yeah. um, thank you guys, man. I appreciate yeah. you. I appreciate you as usual, Reap. Um, we'll talk oh, soon, guys. Absolutely. All righty. Thanks again, Josh. Thank you guys so much. Thank appreciate you. it. Mm hmm. Bye.